Hey, welcome back to Cards and Comics, and I got a small but very big uh, mail day. Uh, probably one of the biggest mail days I had of the year, so uh, get to it real quick. And uh, won't be a long video, but um, hopefully it'll be uh, quantity over or quality over quantity. That's how it goes, All right? All right. So gonna read what it says. Uh, 2013 Hoops Gianna. So this is what's fun about uh, PSA not in the grading business now. Um, a lot more cards are coming up, uh, or I guess I'm buying and thinking about raw. So here we go. And there we go. So that is a Gianna circuit card. I think it's pretty well priced. Um, Let's see here. Looks pretty good for the grade. Pretty good centered. So it's a Giannis rookie card. And obviously last year or two years ago, it would have been something you would have immediately graded. And now you're just kind of looking at that car going like, yeah, it's cool. And it's raw. And it's probably going to stay that way for a while. Next up is... Sorry about that. Ooh, a 1933 Gaudi uh, Buffalo Bill Indian Gum, and I'm slowly putting this card set together. It's really pretty set. Uh, you know, in this kind of mid-grade, I really, really dig these kind of cards. And yeah, it's one of the keys in the set. I mean, if you can call it a key, there's not a ton of keys in, in this set, so... Um, you know, a Sydney Bowl and a few cards, but um, none of them are crazy expensive compared to the other. So, but it's one of the ones that is a little more expensive. So, here is some of the, I think, maybe some of the bigger cards. Yeah. We'll see how that's packaged. These two packages are from the same dealer. So, we'll see what we got. Um,. So you sent me my package in two lots and see what we got here. All right, 1970 Brooks Robinson. Um, very cool. And 1967 Cornell Green, 8.5. Um, cool Cowboys. I believe that's his rookie card. And um, yeah, so in a 70s Brooks Robinson. Um, you know, I'm a sucker for the 70s. They're so cheap still, and, uh, you know, I think that's a cool card. I always like that full batting pose, so. All right, so the big cards are going to be here. So, we will open this, and again, um, definitely um, one of the bigger mail days of the year, and, uh, You'll see why. I mean, um, it's definitely um, part of my core collection goals. And it actually completes a run of cards for me that uh, I've been putting together for, oh, 20 plus years. So kind of fun uh, to, to finally have a complete run of this player's cards. Well, not fully run, but it's from uh, it completes the whole era, I guess. Um, so we'll start out with a sixty, sorry, a fifty-two Bowman Duke Snyder PSA eight. Um, I really think these cards are criminally underrated. Um, these cards are super nice. Um, you know, just in general, I've I, you know, in some of my videos I talked about these. I really think these. <laughs> earlier uh, Bowman cards, the smaller ones, you know, are little works of art. And I just think that, you know, um, after 1953, we kind of lost this style of card. And, yeah, I know they reproduced it in some retro sets, but still, I think it's the real deal. It's a good Hall of Famer and a PSA 8 from the 50s. And one of my goals for the year was to increase my 1950s collection and really have um, you know, a focus on the fifties. Um, and so I've been trying to do that. And this is a definitely a cool card. And I picked up a lot of Duke Snyder's this year because, you know, 
in all honesty, you know, the errands and the maze cards are so expensive that, you know, I can't pick up the fifties cards like I could have a couple of years ago. So, um, you know, Snyder is definitely more affordable, but his cards are so cool and he was a great player and I don't mind having, uh, definitely don't mind having a 52 Bowman. So next up, if you saw it was the 71 blue Brock and I'm a, I'm a sucker for 71s. Uh, I really like this card, a Brock. I think it's a really cool Brock card. And uh, yeah, all 71s, you know, if they're in this high grade, I mean, they just look really cool. You can see the back. Um, you know, again, one of the first times, and maybe the first time they used the double photos, front and back. Uh, they didn't really do it again for a long time. I think it took a long time before the the double photos to come back. Um yeah, I'm really um, glad I, I don't have this card, so it kind of helps complete some of my um, 71 cards for sure. And it's an 8. And uh, Next up is a 64 McCovey 8. And uh, I actually really like the 64 set. I think it's a super clean design. And then if you get them well-centered uh, with some collar, um, they are, I think, really pretty cards. And I know a lot of people kind of, you go from 62, 63, 65 and kind of overlook this set. And I've heard, you know, I've had a lot of people you know, compare this to 67, which is kind of another basic design, but I really think the 64 set's underrated. And when they look nice, like this card, I, I'm really um, um, happy. And then you can see the back, and it's a pretty good back. I'd say it's, it's a little above average. Um, it's a little off center, but has good color. So um, sometimes this orange can be very faded. Okay, 64, William McCovey. All right, next up with the 50s theme is a 53 Bowman color, Nellie Fox. And yeah, this card just is really cool. And, you know, again, as much as we love the 52 set, which is more of like a art card this is definitely the future of baseball cards this color full color photo and uh no set did it better than 53 bowman just you know the big uh set really or the big cards really showed off the photography and if you know this set it has some really cool photography and kind of you know um, was the first set to really you know be so simple but it you know showcased the player the uniforms i mean this is when the uniforms are just you know the best i think um and these cards really show off you know the photography the field stadiums and uniforms and so this set is a is really screams 50s to me and this guy's a hall of famer so i love to have this card you can see the back and uh last but not least and so this is a big card and uh, you know, prices are, are, you know, are still pretty high on cards like this, but I do think for what it is, it's definitely worth the higher price. And it's a 66 maze PSA eight. And, uh, this card completes my 1960s maze run. So I now have every card from the sixties of Willie Mays. And, uh, you know, I bought the 68 earlier this year and now I've got the 66. So I now have the entire run. And, um, yeah, I'm really stoked to have this card. Um, you know, it's the number one card in the set, so it's always a little harder condition wise. So it'll obviously be an upper left, uh, in the sheet. So all the corner cards and sheets are, are, are hard to get centered. Um, a great example of that is the 76 George Brett. It is a corner card on the sheet. That's why it's so difficult to find centered. So obviously this card would be number one. It would be, you know, first card in the upper left of the sheet and so you can see this card is a little off centered um, but still an eight and um, the back is uh, a good back it's not you know actually it's it's above average you know if you get down to it I mean it's not white white if you saw my 66 mantle that card was just screaming white back but this is very nice and the color on this card is super good you can see the gloss and uh so yeah this card is really nice and again you know if you're a centering guy you're like oh well it's a little off center well you know 
This card has a ton of other good features to it. Color, gloss, corners, white borders, good bag. So it's a solid eight. It finishes my 60 May set. And again, it's it's kind of like the, the centerpiece, but you know, it's a fun mail day, you know, a cool modern basketball rookie, a 30s card, some 50s Hall of Famers, some you know, 71 Brock. Uh, you know, just you know, fun cards and it helps me with some of my set. Finishes my 60 May, so all in all, a very good day and one of the better mail days I've had all year, and I'll see you next time. Bye.